Well, joining us now is Tim Evans from Longleaf Trading Group. He's live in the CME in Chicago. Tim, great to have you on board as always. Thanks very much for joining us. Now, just listening to that package there about those geopolitical t tensions rising there in, in the Middle East, and we are seeing oil prices rising there. Um, I mean, an escalation really between the Kurdish regional government and Baghdad following that, that vote of independence. What do you think could be the potential fallout here? Uh, I mean, the, the, obviously that development over the weekend, along with a few others, uh, you know, really gave the bulls a lot to work with as the trading week got started. Uh, I mean, the, the, the situation with Iraq forces entering uh, Kirkuk, I mean, it could be substantial uh, because it's, it's, it's much bigger than that. You know, we have Turkey involved uh, in this scenario as well. And I think what the market is ultimately afraid of is that pipeline uh, that, that ultimately exports uh, Kurdish crude oil uh, could possibly be shut down. And that would definitely have a major disruptive effect on global energy markets. Um, yeah, so obviously those geopolitical tensions, one of the, the aspects that's uh, at play there, but obviously the week getting off to a pretty bullish start there. Um, we've been watching some of those rig counts coming through as well. Last Friday, Baker Hughes reporting um, those dri drillers cut about five rigs, and I note that that's the lowest rig count since early June. Um, so again, that's sort of great news um, for right. the oil price, and uh, obviously, as I say, sort of getting the week out to a bullish start. Yeah, I mean, it's all about supply and demand fundamentals. And, you know, the, the demand side of the equation, uh, you know, has had plenty to work with here. Um, you know, as your uh, introducer of the, the news before me discussed, you know, the uh, Trump administration refusing to, you know, certify Iran's compliance with the accord set with the Obama administration has also potentially great impact on the supply side of the market. Uh, you know, Congress, again, has 60 days, uh, you know, to ultimately determine if sanctions are going to be uh, brought against Iran. Uh, you know, that last round of sanctions, you know, that took a million barrels of crude oil a day off the market. So, uh, the, you know, I think most market participants don't think that it, those sanctions would have that type of effect this time around because the U.S. would probably be going it alone. Uh, it still would have uh, implications in terms of the supply and demand fundamentals of crude oil. Uh, and, and over the weekend as well, um, you know, news out of China, their inflation readings were higher than what the market was expecting. And they also upwardly revised uh, GDP uh, growth estimates uh, for the second half of 2017. You know, so that obviously a lot of demand comes from China. You know, South Korea also announced its, its crude imports were up 22 percent from Iran year over year. Uh, so there's a lot of demand coming out of Asia, and, you know, as you indicated earlier, Leanne, with the Baker Hughes count, you know, the supply side might be finally slowing down to the point where we're going to be able to find the balance that a lot of folks have been looking for for quite some time now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you talk about all those dynamics and it, it does appear like we are heading towards a bit of a rebalance in the market. There's a lot of expectation now that OPEC will extend those production cuts there. Do you think it is needed, given the fact that we are starting to see things, you know, kind of um, reassuring, I suppose, with that supply starting to come out and so forth? I mean, do you think there is a need for further extensions to, the, to those production cuts? I, I, I do. I mean, there definitely there's there's been progress. I mean, you know, any any uh, measurement you use to look at, uh, you know, global balance of crude oil. I mean, the the picture has improved dramatically uh, from November when they initially uh, passed the production cut agreement. Um, I, I think from a psychological standpoint, it's important that the market continues to believe that OPEC will in fact extend the production cut agreement past uh, March of 2018. Uh, I think it will also uh, prevent U.S. drillers from being bullish and continuing to add rigs back, uh, back into action, uh, and kind of reversing the, the, we, the trend that we've seen with the reduction of rigs eight of the, li eight of the last nine weeks. Uh, so, yeah, I do think it's ultimately going to be needed. How long? It's very tough to say. I mean, we're really going to have to kind of see what the global market balance looks like in the early months of January, February to really make that determination. So, Tim, are you long crude here with the hope that we will see an extension to those production cuts? We are, we're, we're not long crude. Uh, at Longleaf, we're long crude volatility. Uh, you know, we still think there's enough bearish um, forces in the market that are going to prevent the market from really taking off here in the near term beyond $55. Uh, 
uh, but we will we definitely are expecting to see elevated levels of market volatility so uh, we're not directionally long crude yet. I think ultimately in the intermediate and long term, that's going to de definitely be a good play. But uh, right now, I think the volatility play is uh, more suitable for market conditions. And just talk us through that net spec position, because that also looks a little lofty, although still below the, the record there. And I guess that adds to your view there about potentials for, for increases to volatility. Right. Right. I mean, we're, we're over 450,000 contracts if you look at the net spec position in the market. Uh, and historically, that's large. Now, it is 125,000 contracts under what the record is. So we're not at record levels where, you know, uh, the market's very fearful that, you know, any amount of selling could really uh, have a domino effect and some, some more aggressive selling. Uh, but Given the, given the spec position is so large, it does indeed leave the market susceptible to selling off. And, and that's really at the core of our opinion with respect to market volatility. Because on any kind of bearish news, we still expect uh, that we're going to see some aggressive downside action. All right, Tim, just to finish up, I mean, you mentioned there obviously that optimism that seems to be coming out of China with those favourable inflation readings and an upward revision to those growth forecasts and so forth. What other commodities are you looking at right now um, with what seems to be a pretty positive backdrop from China? Uh, the commodity, uh, if, if you want to consider the U.S. dollar a commodity, I mean, I, I think the U.S. dollar is, is poised to do very well. I mean, I ultimately think the... The Fed is going to raise rates, uh, you know, as they've been discussing in December. Uh, and I think the underlying fundamentals of the U.S. economy are still strong. You know, there is some debate in terms of what the growth outlooks look like, but they've improved over time, and I fully expect that they'll continue to do that. Uh, so all that being said, you know, with a, with a, uh, a stronger dollar, you know, that it will have a negative effect on certain commodity prices. I know we, you and I spoke about gold last week, and I think gold is the first market that is ultimately you know, uh, going to be held down by that rising dollar. And today's price action, we saw that dollar index was up about 30 points. Uh, uh, gold was down close to 10 bucks. So I think that dynamic still in play is going to prevent gold from going higher. Um, you know, so possibly looking at a short side position in gold, I think would, uh, um, you know, be able to deliver some in investment results here in the intermediate term. All right, fantastic. Tim, we'll wrap it up there. A pleasure as always. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Leanne. That was Tim Evans there from Longleaf Trading.